what's up Jinch here and welcome back to another CSGO movie making tutorial. Today we're not going to be inside of Counter-Strike at all. Today we're going to be fully in After Effects and I'm going to teach you how to motion track um, any CS clip. Uh, this isn't particularly cinematics but that's the one I'm, I'm going to be showing today. So um, the first thing obviously you want to do is head into uh, After Effects, make yourself a new composition. Um, so we're going to go to composition, new composition, name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it track for the purposes of this tutorial. 1920, 1080, 60 FPS, whatever settings you like to set it up to, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to set it to 30 seconds. We're going to change that in a second and click OK. So we have our new track, our new track, our new composition or whatever. And we're going to import our clip by double clicking in this little media panel here. That's going to bring us to our import file option here, where we're going to choose to import a file and the one that we're going to choose here, blah de blah, a long, uh, which is a cinematic, one of the cinematics I've made on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can download all these as a pack. You just head to the video, download links always in the description. 1080p, 60 FPS, you can use them in whatever you like. So um, we're going to be motion tracking this this lovely looking clip. Um, and we're going to be, well, yeah, motion tracking it. So, <laughs> um, we're not going to motion track this whole thing though, cause that is going to take quite a while otherwise. So we're just going to pick up, pick off some spots. So let's go maybe, where should we go from here? Uh, so we'll press alt and then the square bracket, left square bracket to cut. We'll just do about two seconds and then alt and right square bracket. Go to start and we're going to pull it back up. Press uh, N to shorten the comp uh, work area and then right click on that bit there and trim comp to work area. Now we've got our composition perfectly set to what we want to track and we can get started. So obviously, as I said, you can do this with any any clip you want. It doesn't specifically have to be um, cinematics. It can be a clip with a person running and that's fine. I might make a new tutorial further down the line of how to do something like that where the player runs across the camera um, you can do that with either masks or rotoscoping. So I'll make a new tutorial on that a bit later on. So you can set text behind them and everything and, and whatever. I'll also possibly do one about um, using, what do you call it? Element 3D possibly. So you can have like 3D text with reflections and stuff. Anyway, so to get tracking, all we want to do is click on our clip here. And we're going to go to window and select the tracker window down here now i've already got it selected and set up on the right hand side here as you can see so once we've selected our clip we're going to go on to track camera uh, track motion is kind of the same not really um <laughs> track motion and track camera is a little bit different if you want the full perspective to change of the object we're going to be putting in then track camera is your best bet um, so you'll see it says analyzing in the background and up the top left you can see the percent it's on basically it's just going through the background making sure that they can find everything and what it's going to end up doing is placing dots all around the scene and we're going to be able to make a triangle out of those dots which we can uh, create a 3D camera from as well as a null which we're going to be able to parent things to such as text so once it's solved the camera uh, we'll see all of our dots appear like this here and if I scrub through you can see these dots follow our follow our um, cinematic in the background so they perfectly stick to different places around the cinematic to make sure that it's been properly tracked now um, as you can see as I move my mouse around there's a little red circle that appears showing us that we can make triangles out of all of these different points around here. Now, we're going to be tracking the um, text. I'm just going to track my name, Ginge, into the tech, into the cinematic. So it's just going to be a block of text. Um, and we want to parent that so it moves with the, with the cinematic as it comes in. So we ideally want a plane that's going to be directly... Um, parallel to the floor so any of these you can see would work these three dots are all connecting together quite nicely now one thing you want to make sure you do is if you go to about midway in the scene to select your points then you'll know that you're not gonna they're not all the points aren't going to disappear and what I mean by that is say we start up the top here and you selected maybe this triangle here well by the time you got to the middle of the scene like it disappears 
So this, these dots around the bottom here, as you scrub through, you can see they start to disappear as that element of the cinematic or video starts to go out. So we're going to go to about midway, as I said, and we're going to select a plane. So I'm going to choose about up here, just because why not? And just click uh, when you when you feel like that's the place you want to make your cinematic. Just click, and it will create these three points here. And then we're going to right click in the center of that red circle and choose the create null and camera. What that's going to do is place two more objects here. We've got our track null, which if we click on that and scrub through, you can see our three axis just stuck to the cinematic. You've also got our 3D tracked camera. So anything that we place on the inside of this frame is going to correspond with that 3D tracked camera and move with the scene. So now we've got all of that. That is our motion tracked. So we're going to go over to our text tool and I'm just going to type out a simple ginge. And this is what we're going to be tracking into our scene. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that the parent here is set to the track null. So you can either go click on the layer, go to parent, none, and click on track null. Or you can click and hold off of that little squiggly thing here so you get a line come out and drag it on top of the track null. So now we've got that parented to our track null. We can set the 3D layer to active on this layer. So you can see the ginger layer, you've got three symbols up here. You've got your motion blur one, you've got adjustment layers to make sure that either it is or isn't affected by adjustment layers, and you've got our 3D layer. So we're going to click on the little box and you should have a 3D like cube appear, and the whole perspective of that text is going to change. So now if we click off, you can see the text is on the floor there, and if we scrub through, the text is sticking to the floor like it's grown there. <sighs> I've been trying to fit that phrase into anything and it's finally paid off. I'm really happy. Anyway, obviously that doesn't look good. Um, as it is, we can scrub through. We can barely read it until we get up close and we're like, oh, yeah, that says ginge, right? Okay. Um, now, really, I want us to kind of fly by this. So we're going to go back to the start. We're going to click on ginge and click U. Uh, or no, we're not. We're going to come down. <laughs> um, and instead, we're going to click on the transform thing here. U only works if you've already got keyframes, which we don't have, and so therefore we need to go through. So let me just repeat that in case anyone missed it. Click on the little arrow on the left-hand side here. You'll have text, transform, and material options show up. And we want to click on transform and click the arrow down on that. In here, you'll find orientation, X, Y, and Z. Um, the only real ones we want to mess about with here are the orientation. So the one on the far left is going to adjust uh, this angle here, which is the, exactly the angle we want, which I believe is the X angle. Um, we've also got the next one along here, which adjusts the Y orientation. And we've got our third one, which adjusts the Z orientation. So let's control Z on a few of those. What we want to do is if we zoom in, so just press H here to be able to get this hand up and use your scroll wheel to just zoom in. And then press V on your keyboard to go back to your normal cursor. What we want to do is angle this text more towards us. And these axes we're going to see here are extremely helpful for this. So the first one that we want to do is change our left orientation. So the first number here up. Now if we set this to 90, that's going to mean that because we tracked on the floor, that's going to leave the text facing upright. Obviously, now that's facing to the right a little bit. So we want to adjust our Y axis here. So if we click and hold on to that until this blue line is pointing straight towards us, that means it's facing the camera. So for me, that's about 25 degrees. And um, obviously, you can see now it's on a bit of a tilt to the right. So we can go back in and adjust our orientations as needs be. And a good thing about this as well is that if you want to move around this text you can you can just click and move it around like that but in all honesty that can kind of mess up the track sometimes so if you want to move things around hover your mouse above the axis you want to move it along um, so you see now we've got a normal mouse drag it above it's gone black and it now says Y next to it so we know we're adjusting our Y axis click and hold onto that and move your cursor and you can see we're now moving the text a lot slower um, a lot more controlled um, so we're not likely to mess up the track any any more. I'd say any more, but we haven't really messed up the track anyway. So um, so now if we click out, 
and we now track in you can see our text is still following the floor but it's a lot more cleaner now we can see it um it's very nice and nice <laughs> for lack of a better word um it works it's now tracked into the scene it looks fabulous it looks really well it slides incredibly good with it however it's a bit far away and this is where sometimes it's kind of uh, situation based if we go um, and click on our layer again and we hover over our Z axis here, which will be the blue one. If we click and hold on that and this time hold shift, that means it increments it by a lot more, right? So you can see this is me holding shift and moving my mouse. This is me not holding shift and moving my mouse the same amount. So holding shift, I believe times is everything by 10. So now you can see we've moved in forwards in our Z space, meaning that now it's a lot closer to the camera so as we go through the cinematic we fly past the text instead of just having it really far off in the distance so if we push it back a little bit more so it's in frame for a bit longer and we can fly by it like that so let's do a quick uh cache preview because it's not a ram preview anymore it's called cache preview and what we'll see now is we actually fly by the text and it's perfectly tracked into the scene so that's pretty much it for this tutorial as you can see i've just put text in it but hopefully this opens your eyes and allows you to think more outside the box and think yeah actually maybe instead of if we didn't put text in here maybe we tracked a team's logo onto the wall maybe a player's picture onto the wall maybe if you're doing a oh, that'd be a good one actually if you're doing a highlight reel of a player maybe just before they're about to get the the 4k or whatever you track a picture of them onto the wall next to them as they run up that would be good. That would set you off from other people. But I'm not telling you how to control your YouTube channel. I'm just showing you the tips and tricks. And I've just hit my desk. So, guys, I think that wraps it up for this episode of CSGO uh, movie making tutorials. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, just a quick thank you as well. Because, obviously, the channel's been blowing up quite a lot recently. And I've recently got partnered as well with Omnia. Um, so, thank you very much. I, don't, I doubt any of the Omnia guys are going to watch this. But... Um, an incredible uh network really helped me moving across from uh, <coughs> my old one over to these guys so a big shout out to them if they're even watching but um other than that guys thank you very much for watching as i said hope you learned something hope you enjoyed it. if you did leave a like and uh subscribe for more kind of videos like this uh toodaloo